Hey there guys, welcome back to the show. My name is Joyce Omondi Waihiga and this is Full Circle with Joyce. Great to have your company and welcome to the second hour of our show. In it, we're going to be touching on relationships a bit later on. But uh, first, we'll be looking at uh, health and uh, talking to an OBGYN uh, in studio today, taking in your questions, your feedback and your comments as well. And um, before we get into that, let me read you our quote for the day. This one is by Carl Menninger, and it says, Love cures people, both the ones who give it and the ones who receive it. I'll read that again. Love cures people, both the ones who give it and the ones who receive it. Great quote there this morning. And uh, let me just shout out uh, those of you who are engaging with me here today on the show. I have Patin Joroge on Facebook. We had asked you to uh, comment over there. So let me just read the messages. I mean, your names only. Patty Joroge, Memoy Askar, Sess Empress Isaacs, Princess K.E., Lynette Lillian, uh, Irene Seishon, uh, Dominic Nyabuto, Douglas Saboke, Angie Mom Ethan, Governor Kariuki, and many others. Thank you very much. I'm going to be touching on them as well as we go along remember triple one triple four triple one is the sms line you can also comment on facebook at switch tv kenya and on instagram at switch tv ke well my guest in studio now uh, with us here we have dr kireki who's an OBGYN. great to have you on the show karibu sana thank you very much for welcoming me you're most welcome me. yes and uh, we want to address some of the common questions that i guess uh, are raised as yes. far as uh, a woman's reproductive health system System. And um, maybe we can begin with talking about the best way mm -hmm. to treat period cramps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, for some women, it's actually it's almost disabling. Problem. Yeah. Yes, that yeah. is true. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, uh, very common problem. Mm -hmm. And um, it is an issue which uh, most ladies actually grapple with. Um, usually when a patient comes to uh, the gynecologist, one of the first questions we ask is, when did, she first have, when did she start her first periods? And whether the periods are regular? And uh, if they are regular, what are the characteristics of, that, uh, of the periods? So we ask whether the periods are normal, meaning the flow is normal, mm -hmm. is it too heavy? Uh, the next thing we ask is whether there is any pain. And most of the women say, yes, there are cramps. And some would say, yes, it is actually not cramps, but pain. And that pain sometimes is very, very much. It's a right. lot of pain. Right. And then the other thing we ask is whether there are any, any, any clots. Why do we ask all this? Because this sort of questions you know short of sort of give us a roadmap mm. um, about what the possible uh, reasons could be okay the the mild cramps which are there um, are actually uh, you know they can be taken care of very very easily okay. but when the patient says that I have serious pain and I have clots then we have to start to ask a little bit deeper when does this pain start some of this pain can actually start a few days before or even up to a week before the periods okay. and this pain disappears you know once the period starts that is a very very good pointer about what the possible reason can be right. now some of the reasons for uh, for cramps especially the the deb debilitating cramps can be because of what we call endometriosis mm -hmm. a big big problem which affects about 10 to 15 percent of women who are trying to get pregnant okay uh, it can also be because of other structures other growth in the womb for example fibroids mm -hmm. can also be a reason for that mm. and then uh, during the during the, the period when the, when the ladies have um, uh, their periods uh, the body releases what we call prostaglandins which actually cause contractions mm -hmm. and such that uh, in order for have a period a lady to have a period that there's what we call the lining of the womb which comes out because there was no implantation there was no pregnancy okay. so that is why ladies have a period okay. now for it to come out it is um, um, a, a sort of a, a process where the body releases chemicals mm. which lead to contractions of the womb so that whatever the lining that was there mm -hmm. comes out. And that is what is experienced as cramps. Okay. Now, you mentioned something very interesting that sometimes these cramps can actually be um, completely debilitating. Mm -hmm. There is what we call premenstrual uh, syndrome or even uh, going a little bit further, what is called premenstrual dysphoria, uh, dysphoric disorder. Mm -hmm. Whereas apart from the normal uh, period that is there, there is pain, um, sometimes there is diarrhea, 
there is vomiting wow. and uh, these some of these patients actually are irritable and uh, they have mood swings some of them don't even get out of bed and so on wow. but luckily this is a very small percentage okay. but by and large most ladies will have a little bit a little bit of pain here and there so when they come with this very intensive pain we need to find out exactly what is what the problem is okay. and then we can help them all right mm. um at what point should someone when should a young girl have her first uh, OBGYN visit? Um, that, that is that, that, that's a fantastic question. Ideally, Joyce, when she gets her first period, ideally. Okay. Why? Because she has transformed actually from being a little girl, as it were, to actually a lady. Mm -hmm. So she needs to know just the first, uh, the first gynecological visit should actually be a discussion okay. such that this young lady knows that such, you know, cyclical, you know, uh, coming to a gynecologist every so often should actually be embedded in her mind mm. such that in future when she thinks about having a baby or the other issues which are gynecological, it is not trauma mm -hmm. to her. So ideally it should be with the first period, if it is possible. But um, we need to work on that okay. so that we raise awareness that um, these young ladies, once they start having their periods, they should come and we start, you know, walking this journey together. Okay. Because we'll walk this journey together throughout throughout their lives. Someone here has an interesting question saying, how do we treat the moods that accompany, <laughs> I guess, uh, <laughs> the period cycle? <laughs> Is it possible to treat the moods? <laughs> now, um, uh, yes and no. Okay. Why am I saying yes and no? Um, uh, number one, we need to find out what the reason is. If the reason is connected with the cycles and uh, the mood swings come only during um, the periods, then we can do one or two things. Number one, um, we can try and stop those periods from from coming every month. Okay. So maybe uh, uh, we can give them um, uh, medication. You'd actually stop them from coming? Yes, we can. Is that healthy? It is healthy. Okay. It is definitely healthy, yeah. Okay. And um, such that instead of having this problem coming every month, it can come maybe once every three months, and then maybe the intensity may be actually be a lot lower. Mm. So we can actually do uh, what you call um, continuous medication, where we give uh, oral contraceptive pills or we use uh, patches, hormonal treatment, okay. uh, for maybe two months or three months. Actually, some, um, some researchers out there mm. suggest that you can even go up to six months okay such that whatever this problem is is as rare as possible All right. that is one way the okay. other way which uh, I usually do as a last resort and especially if this really does um, uh, affect the, the the mental health of the patient mm -hmm. is now to discuss with my colleagues who are um, who are uh, psychiatrists mm -hmm. and see whether we can give her some mild medications which can help her with these mood swings. Okay. Yes. Some other important uh, topics around uh, OBGYN and reproductive health mm. is uh, vaginal order. Yes. And there are some women who really struggle with, with that, like it makes them super uncomfortable. Yes. And then that's where you start hearing mm -hmm. things like people are doing all manner of things to try and clean themselves, that's quote right. unquote, that's in, right. in, a, in a hope to get rid of you know the smell yes can you talk to us about what actually causes this vaginal order in the first place very good uh, it's a common problem and um, actually some patients have this a recurring problem especially around ovulation time not ovulation time but when they're having their periods they come and say like Tari, every time i have a period i have this you know bad smell you know coming from my 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 private pants uh, one of the f questions we want to ask which may found uh, may sound a little bit you know prosaic is what kind of smell is it because that also gives us an idea about what the problem could be. Okay. So when we ask what kind of smell, they say, you know, it sounds like rotten, smells like rotten fish. Aha, we know what kind of problem it is. Now, in the vagina, um, there are billions of bacteria okay. which are actually supposed to be there. Okay. And uh, there is a, an interaction between this, the, the normal flora bacteria and the other ones, and they keep each other in check okay. such that if the normal and the 
the, the disease causing ones are on um, on par as it were nothing happens you have a beautiful uh, vaginal environment which is healthy for the uh, for the patient if there is a disturbance in this equilibrium then the ones which cause disease take over and that is why you have infections and you have um, so many other things mm. and other things is is, um, is um, uh, the bad smell that okay. comes from them now the ones that cause that bad smell is um, a particular uh, group of bacteria which once they react with the uh, material in the vagina they actually give out that smell of of dead fish okay um, uh, we can easily treat that without any problem that is why that is very important to ask what kind of smell it gotcha. is and we give them medications orally or sometimes vaginally mm. and it's a problem which we solve very very easily okay. now having said that it is important for women to have good vaginal flora mm -hmm. and they are what we call probiotics which they can also take mm -hmm. in order for that um, um, that um, uh, uh, vaginal flora to be how it is supposed to be mm -hmm. and for the vaginas to be healthy all right mm -hmm. um, and so the proper way to sort of clean oneself because mm -hmm. we've heard of things like douching mm -hmm. there are people who actually go out and create products in yes. the name of uh, that these are to aid women in, in, in taking care of themselves and in keeping themselves and grooming themselves. Mm. Are those safe to use? Um, uh, there is a huge discussion about uh, douching. And um, uh, should we use this and what kind of um, um, material should we use for douching? Um, should we use scented or non-scented, you know, uh, things when we are we're washing the vagina and so on and so forth. The rule of thumb is uh, to clean uh, the vagina, especially when you're having a shower. Try not to use things which are uh, the pH because here is basically about the pH where the pH is uh, very low because the pH in the vagina is actually acidic. Okay. So if if you use um, a pH which is high, it will neutralize the acid in the vagina, making the vaginal environment prone to infections and so on. Okay. So try to use whatever we use for cleaning the vagina has to have a pH which is similar or near similar to the pH uh, in the vagina, which is nearly acidic. And that, and that number is what? About 7, 7.2, 7.5. Okay. About that much. Okay. Now, something interesting. Uh, God created us in a very interesting way. We are mm -hmm. actually, as the psalmist says, we are beautifully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. For the pH in the vagina, we need it to be acidic. For the pH in the sperm, we need it to be basic. So when they meet, it's actually neutral. Okay. So it helps the sperm to actually swim and make, and you know, pro, uh, lead to, to procreation. Wow. So it is important that uh, if we are going to do a vaginal, um, a vaginal uh, health, as it were, yeah. a vaginal cleanliness, the pH is very, very important. Okay. And we have to look at it. Wow. Mm. Daktari, I feel like we, we need more time with you. Unfortunately, <laughs> the, 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 my minutes are already <laughs> gone. Uh, but uh, hopefully you'd be happy to come back some I'm other time. I'm more than happy. I'm and I think we can come. have a, a bit more of a discussion. But maybe actually we'll just take a quick break yes. and then come back and wrap up a few more questions no problem. with you. Mm. Remember, triple one, triple four, triple one is the SMS line. You can send in your questions and your feedback to that number. And we'll be back after this. Hey guys, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. I'm here with Dr. Kireki and we're answering all your questions as far as your uh, gynecological health is concerned. And uh, thank you once again for those of you who are sending in your feedback and your comments. Remember, triple one, triple four, triple one is the SMS line. And uh, let's just pick up straight back from where we left off. Um, a lot of people here are commenting about uh, their periods yes. and uh, menstrual cramps and the like. One person is saying that the dosage, they usually go to the hospital because of them and the dosage that they're given is i guess one times one so maybe one one pill once a day yes um and uh, they're saying it's not effective because mm. after five hours the pain comes back mm -hmm. and they hardly sleep is it good for them to take the dosage twice mm -hmm. which they've been doing mm. or should they just go back to the hospital for a stronger dose I think number one, we need to find out what the reason is for this for this pain. You remember I mentioned um, ab about the possible reasons for this pain. Uh, it could be endometriosis. Could be they have fibroids. Could they have? Could be they have other issues as well. Could be because.
because they have infection also in the pelvis and because of that this could lead to uh, serious uh, period pains. Okay. Now once you've established that there are no other issues, there are no fibroids, no endometriosis and so on, then we come back and see on a scale of 0 to 10 how how does this pain, where do you put it? Okay. Does it affect your quality of life? By quality of life means, do you, does it stop you from, from doing the normal things that you do? Meaning you can't go to work, you can't go to school, for example, you can't wake up and cook and so on and so forth, and you're just lying in bed and so on. So we have to look at it from that point of view. Now, in terms of treatment, number one, it is not right to go and just buy paracetamol or whatever it is over the counter. The most important thing is to see your gynecologist sort out the issue first of all know what the issue is in terms of treatment depending on um, how severe this pain is we have what you call the ladder a ladder of analgesics which we can use okay. the most straightforward ones that we use for simple um, crampy sometimes which doesn't take very long which disappears very easily is uh, paracetamol panadol and so on if that doesn't work, again, she asked about one times one, yeah. and if it doesn't work, what should doubling, we do? Can she, she can double the dose. Yes, she can take two tablets, and actually she can increase the dose to two tablets, even up to three times a day of Panadol. Panadol, yes, Panadol, paracetamols are very, very safe uh, medications, which can be used without any problems. Okay. Now, if that doesn't work, then we need to scale up in terms of medication. We have what we call NSAIDs, that is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Mm -hmm. um, things like tenclofenac, ibuprofen, and so on. This usually do help. Sometimes we may use paracetamol with an addition of, of these medications, whether it is orally or whether it is um, rectally, um, uh, that can also be used. Okay. If that doesn't work, then we can also go up to another group of medications and so on. All now, right. apart from that, Again, depending on the uh, extent of, um, of uh, and the quality of life, how the periods, uh, the period pain affects our quality of life, we can actually throw in other medications as well. Mm -hmm. We can talk about oral contraceptive pills, which are hormonal, okay. and so on and so forth. So we have quite a bit of space um, e with medications uh, that we can use to play around, such that we make this lady, uh, this lady comfortable. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, what about those who are struggling with um, other discomforts mm -hmm. like itchiness mm -hmm. and uh, concerns mm -hmm. about things like sexually transmitted diseases? Very good. Now, when it comes to itchiness, unfortunately, uh, because of the anatomy, that is the location of the vagina, and you remember we talked about the floral mm -hmm. and other um, other uh, other uh, things which are in the vagina, which are important for the normal functioning of the bacteria, and if that balance between the the good bacteria and the bad bacteria is destabilized, then there is more um, uh, there are more chances of having an uh, infection. And one of the most common infections that ladies have, most ladies will have this at least once a year, is um, uh, what you call candida. So they may have a bit of itchiness either on the outside or in the vagina itself or in both. Uh, it starts, it's, it's itchy and it's, you know, disturbing and they keep on itching and so on. Sometimes because of that, you know, scratching and whatever, it can lead to a, some lacerations and so on. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, it's a very straightforward um, uh, uh, issue to, so, to sort out because when we put what you call a, spectra, um, uh, a speculum and we look inside, we usually have... Um, sort of a cuddly um, uh, discharge. When you just look at it and we know it's very, very characteristic. Okay. So we give them medications which can be local, that is vaginally, or they can even swallow tablets okay. or both, meaning um, medication vaginally and uh, a cream uh, to use outside. Right. But of importance is we must know what it is because that itchiness can also be because of other things. Mm -hmm. It can also be because of what we call trichomonas vaginalis, which causes intense itching and the discharge is actually yellowish. And uh, when we put a speculum, we can actually see what we call the cervix, looks like um, strawberry, you know, colored. And um, obviously when you look, it also has a char characteristic smell and so on. Having said that, 
that itchiness again the age of the patient is very important mm. because sometimes when that itchiness comes later on in life when uh, the hormones have actually when the ovaries have stopped producing hormones which support the whole um, uh, of um, a woman's uh, body plus yeah plus the vagina, yeah. it can also be indicative of something else. Okay. Um, that one we need to sort it out. It can also be because of, uh, you know, um, um, of an allergy and so on. So that is why it is important uh, when such things happen, they need to be seen by somebody first instead of, you know, just going to over the counter and saying, you know, I have this and somebody just give you um, s um, medication. Now, talking about uh, sexually transmitted uh, diseases, a very big problem in uh, in the world mm -hmm. and more so in this part of the world mm. why uh, do i say it's a very big problem i do uh, i i actually i'm actually a subspecialist in fertility medicine okay. and 80 to 85 percent of the women that i see have an issue with blocked tubes and mm. the blocked tubes most of the time is because of an infection wow. and that infection usually it's what you call ascending starts from the vagina going upwards and um, goes and blocks blocks the tubes that is one of the reasons there are other reasons as well now um in this part of the world or rather we suggest mm. that uh, if a couple is in a relationship it's better that they zero grace if i can put it that way <laughs> you have this lady and you stick with this man Watch a mambo ya kwenda kufanya sijui home kurandaranda kurandaranda away matches and so on zero grazing no supai <laughs> zero grazing now uh, why is that important mm -hmm. um, if somebody does away matches you can be serious about this gentleman that this is my man and i'm not you know i'm not doing anything i'm zero grazing yeah. but he is doing away grazing and uh, away matches and <laughs> other things <laughs> And he will get <laughs> things from there right. and he will bring them to you. Yeah. So you are zero grazing, but he's all over the place. And this can lead to issues. We have issues with what we call chlamydia. Mm -hmm. It's a silent killer. Let me put right. in quote, quote, in quotes. Because most of the time you actually don't feel to have, don't have any symptoms at all. Yeah. It affects men as well. Because you remember I talked about blocked tubes. Men also can have blocked tubes, mm -hmm. again, because of sexually transmitted diseases. So this we, is both ways. It both acts men both, and women. both men and women. Um, uh, diseases like gonorrhea, right. which also are transmitted, you know, uh, by sexually, uh, sexual transmission. Syphilis. Um, uh, we've been talking about uh, HPV, herpes, mm -hmm. you know, and so on. They are huge, not to talk about what we know very well, that is HIV and mm -hmm. so on. So these are some of the things which we should actually try and protect ourselves okay. from them okay. by doing some very simple things. Okay, if you can't zero grace, then at least if you're going to have, you know, multiple partners, then at least use protection if, um, if that is the case. It will offer you um, a, certain, um, a, a certain level of protection against uh, sexually transmitted diseases. Okay. Mm. Wow, Dr. Terry, I have so many questions in so little time. So I'm going to ask you to just uh, hit these answers as quickly as you can. Okay, as let's so that see. I can get through as many of these SMSs as possible. Yeah. Um, Someone here is saying, is meaty-like periods normal? That doesn't sound okay. No, Even it is I not normal. <laughs> because when it's meaty-like, what it basically means is that there are clots coming out. Yeah, and usually okay. when clots come out, it is because there could be something either on the lining on in the womb or uh, something touching the lining. Yeah. So that one, that is what leads to meaty or uh, meaty-like. You know, it sort of looks like liver, liver-like, oh, you know, dear. periods. Okay. That one needs to be sorted out. All right. Mm. Someone here is asking, can I get pregnant again after I had a miscarriage in June last mm -hmm. year and an abortion in mm. October last year? Wow. Um, uh, yes, you know God is gracious. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're given one chance, sometimes you're given two chances. Hopefully the third chance will be okay. Yeah. She should be able to get pregnant, all things being equal. What we need to find out is whether she took medication for that abortion or whether she went and, and had herself cleaned um, because that can also have an issue right. and if she had herself cleaned was he the abortion where was it? Was it done in a hospital? Was it done in some funny place? Because that can have Talking about it's a big, big topic about about abortion. Um, uh, about four hundred and fifty thousand abortions, illegal abortions, are procured in this country. Wow! Four hundred and fifty thousand. Now, out of those four hundred and fifty thousand, twenty thousand of them actually lead to death. So, twenty thousand women in this country die 
every year yeah. because of serious complications of abortions. Wow. So that is a topic which we'll That's another we, day's we talk topic. on another yeah, day. And we certainly should talk about it as mm. well. Uh, another person here is asking, is it good to treat vaginal infection with aloe vera? Um, uh, honestly speaking, I don't know because I have never used aloe vera to fair treat a vagina, vagina infection. Okay, that's mm. fair enough. Mm. Um, another person here is asking, um, so pe people whose periods don't have a specific date mm -hmm. uh, when it comes, but some... But it comes every, it, so it doesn't have a specific date when yes. it comes, but it comes every month. Yes. Another person is saying there's come after the time 19, 21, 23, 26, 28 days. Is mm -hmm. there a problem? Yes. Um, and then there was one here who's 48 years old and mm -hmm. saying, I've not had my periods now. Um, For how long? Is that, I think, about a year? About a year. Is that a sign of menopause? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the pe when, when you talk about periods, we look at um, the frequency of, mm -hmm. of the period. Um, how soon does it come? Does it come every 14 days? Does it come every 28 days? Does it come every, you know, 35 days or even more? Okay. There are ladies who have periods every once a year, for example. I had a patient who had periods every two years. There is a problem when it is... Uh, irregular usually there is a problem the problem okay. could be hormonal um, it could be because of weight and so on and so forth again yeah. when it is too regular again it is not it is not okay so okay. these ones we need to look at them um, they need to have a, a proper diagnosis a proper history taken um, prop, uh, hormonal tests done um, transvaginal scan done to look at the ovaries and so on such that we have we know exactly what we're dealing with and how we can sort it out now the lady who is 48 and hasn't seen her periods um, uh, you said for a year probably I think it was a year. that could be could be sort of a harbinger that actually we are getting into that state where these periods are going to disappear completely after some time mm. there is premenopausal or perimenopausal and then menopause sets in. In the pre uh, perimenopausal in that the periods start becoming irregular. They can come this month and then after three months they come again. They disappear after six months. You know, playing hide and seek, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah. with, with, with you. And then at some certain point they will, you know, sort of you know, disappear completely. Yeah. Okay. So the fact that she's 48, actually that is sort of an indicator that we are getting close to that time when these periods will disappear. Which also brings its own problems as well sure. you know menopausal problems you know the ovaries are not working the way they are supposed to work and uh, you know uh, the ovaries produce a hormone which is very very important that is estrogen most of it is produced by the ovaries but now when we get to the menopause uh, pre, uh, perimenopause the ovaries sort of uh, uh, are not producing okay. enough of this and this is the hormone which actually makes ladies who they are mm. um, uh, the way they are beautiful the way they talk the way they think and so on and so forth so when this hormone starts reducing it also has a huge impact um, in their psychology in the way they behave okay. and the way they all the, 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 the whole body behaves so you start having hot flashes yeah. palpitations mood swings and so on and so forth yeah, another topic altogether which we, we can yeah. talk about later Doctor, on. I think we're gonna have to make a, another <laughs> date for you to to give us some more of your time <laughs> no i think the questions are are quite a lot and um uh, it would be great to have you back thank you Anytime. i think we've been able to help quite a number of people at least today thank, thank with the you questions we've addressed and so uh we look forward to having him uh people can also find your practice oh yes, yes. oh yes they can i'm actually located at a building called fifth avenue right. so when i ask tell them people at fifth avenue they say where is that building there's a building called fifth avenue offices yeah. and uh, on the third floor 314 okay. 314 the office is called frontline medical consultants it's on gong, uh, gong road okay right on the road fantastic <laughs> yes all right guys we're going to take a break now as we make way for relationship talk benjamin zulu is ready to join me on set as we talk about that recurring x hmm i'm excited to hear how that conversation <laughs> is going to go triple one triple four triple one is the sms line and i'll be back after this